Today we have the Cherry B Neo 87 Brass Edition. I have been using this nonstop since I built it, and I have to say, this is my favorite keyboard. Sure, there are other keyboards I've modded that are more ergonomic, flashy, quiet, or portable, but none of them are as heavy as this keyboard. This keyboard is machined from a solid block of brass and weighs just under 20 pounds. The hot swap and solder PCBs it came with have south-facing sockets, RGB, and screw-in stabilizer mounting. The plate, although made out of steel, is gasket mounted and has leaf spring cuts. The software is QMK and VIA compatible and it, the interface is USB-C. The board has an 8 degree typing angle which I find is perfect for my seating position. There was some controversy with this keyboard as during the beginning stage of production, the person hosting the group by exit scammed the community, taking off with hundreds of thousands of dollars, leaving the customers without a board and the manufacturer with materials and no payment. The manufacturer ended up making the rest of the order and has been selling off the stock to recoup his losses. I asked him if he'd be able to make more and, well, he declined because he's not a keyboard person and wouldn't be able to produce more. This is the very last solid brass version of the keyboard. With all of the exit scams occurring so recently, I was hesitant to order from him, but after some back and forth and a recommendation from one of my coworkers, I felt that it was worth the risk to achieve my goal of obtaining a rare and heavy keyboard. I sent him the nearly $850 it took to order and ship the keyboard to the United States from Hanoi, Vietnam. This was without switches or keycaps. So I ordered some DCX Vilac keycaps and Holy Panda X switches from Drop. The switches are natively manufactured by Getaran and come pre-lubed. I also ordered some Duroc V2 stabilizers. I first modded the keyboard by doing the Band-Aid mod below the stabilizers to dampen the bottom out of the larger stabilized keys. Then I lubed and installed the stabilizers and went to work adding the switches, which were incredibly hard to fit through the plate. I first tried to use the hot swap PCB, but because of the high tolerance of the plate and a misplacement of one of the switches, I ended up tearing one of the traces off the PCB. The PCB was designed for both wind key and wind keyless mounting, and when it fit into the wrong socket, it destroyed it. I tried to fix it, but ended up looking to the solder PCB to save the build. After painstakingly reversing the build, I transferred everything to the solder PCB and got to work soldering. Normally, you should never seat the switches into the plate and then add the PCB, but with such a high tolerance in the PCB, I didn't want to break this PCB. If you'd like to know what tools I used, they're down below. The theme I chose was maroon and gold, which coincidentally was my high school colors. I always thought they looked good together. Now without further ado, here is the sound test. Some premium boards like my NK87 can't work through my KVM, but the Neo87 worked right away. The only thing I would have enjoyed more on this keyboard would be a brass plate. I am extremely scared to drop this board, I'm sure that it would damage the floor. If you're a person that wants a keyboard to never move, this is the board for you. If you guys would like something in return for supporting the channel, please check out the links below for a copy of my novel, and if you don't have the money to support, please email me from an account attached to your Amazon and I'll send you a copy free of charge. I have several boards planned and waiting while I finish my master's degree in computer science. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.